year on year, we are finding more and more plastic in our seas and oceans. You cannot escape plastic in modern day life. I mean, if you look to go a month without buying any plastic, it would be extremely difficult. The problem with plastic is it doesn't go away. It's very robust. So the amount of plastic in the ocean um, doesn't disappear, it accumulates. What's it going to be like in 50 years? What's it going to be like in another 100 years? Plastics have got a huge societal benefit. That we use them in everything. We couldn't live our everyday lives without plastics. Uh, but since the 1950s, when we discovered how to make them, we've also discovered that they're easy to throw away. And one of the main problems with plastics is that we design in this ability for them to last for decades, maybe even hundreds of years, but then we use them once and we just chuck them away. Because of that, the amount of plastic that's present in the environment has been increasing and increasing over the last few decades. What we found out is that when plastic's released into the, the marine environment, it tends to be broken down into smaller and smaller particles. And the sizes of those particles are, are of the similar size to the kinds of particles that uh, many animals eat. This could be in the ocean. Um, 50 years, but what will happen to it is all the UV lights will hit it and make it more brittle and brittle and the chemicals will come out of it and it will break up gradually, it's smashed up by the waves into smaller and smaller bits. And then it becomes a hazard for seabirds, for fish, for anything that consumes it and it fills up their gut. I've been researching the impacts of microplastics on marine worms. Uh, marine worms are a really important part of marine ecosystems. The particular worms that I work on live in the seabed and they rework the sediment, the sand that they live in, and replenish nutrients and minerals and keep it healthy for the other organisms that live in it. Microplastics tend to sink out and settle onto the seabed and they're a similar size and shape to grains of sand. So the animals that live in the seabed and feed on sand can accidentally feed on microplastics too. So animals like worms and mussels and crustaceans all have microplastics inside them. As with the copepods we found the marine worms ingested less food when microplastics were present and we also found this had knock-on effects on their energy reserves. So like the copepods, the marine worms take in less food and therefore less, have less energy to invest in reproduction, growth and survival. The data we have so far from our experiments shows us that zooplankton are definitely taking up microplastics and that actually it's affecting their function, the amount that they're able to eat, their reproduction and also their faeca pellets. Further research has shown that the microplastics and the zooplankton are found in the same place in the seas. But we need to take that a little bit further to see whether in the open ocean the zooplankton are eating the microplastics and that this is having the same effect on their function that we're seeing in our experiments. So once we've collected the data from our science experiments in the laboratory, it's then our duty as scientists to communicate this to other scientists that may be interested, to the public, and also to people that make policies. We work with a lot of policy makers, the people who are actually forming the legislation that, that protects the environment, and what we're able to do is to give them our science, to give them good evidence on which to base that legislation. I don't think plastic should be banned. Um, it's a massively important material. It's got so many benefits in things like medicine and construction and transport. But I think smarter decisions need to be made where we use plastic. Over a third of global plastic production is used in packaging, which is used once and thrown away in the bin. So I'm really conscious of using plastic in my everyday life and I'm really trying my best to minimise that. For me, the focus is on what we can do locally. The whole idea of our project is uh, to get local community groups together to clean their beach regularly. There's a great sense of well-being after a beach clean. Every year, we take off nearly 20 tonnes of plastic, and that's just us as one organisation and our volunteers. So if you looked at that, it would be one of these huge articulated lorries packed to the rafters with plastic 
So there's great benefits uh, to getting involved in beach cleans. We're not looking at a future where we don't use plastic. What we want to know is that the plastics that we do use are safe, that we use them in the right way, that we recycle them safely, um, we use them sustainably. I think we have to inform and educate people quickly so that we can reduce the amount of plastic we use, recycle it or reuse it, because otherwise the problem is only going to get worse.